Hi there, my name is Katherine Gidgery and today I'm going to be sharing with you all about how to put together a timeline if you are a wedding photographer just like me. I've been photographing weddings for a very long time, almost 15 years, so it's safe to say that I've put together a timeline or two. If you're early on in your career and you've never put together a timeline before, this video should really help you. If you feel like even at the end of it, you're not fully prepared, you still want a little bit of extra help, we do actually sell the questionnaire, the sample questionnaire, as well as a sample timeline that you can fill in with your couple's information at catgeducation.com. So let's talk a little bit about how to put together a timeline in case you wanna try and DIY it yourself. I have a separate video that talks about all the things that you should do before you photograph your very first wedding. But one of the things that I talk about is that you should schedule a pre-wedding meeting about two weeks before the wedding. This is when things are nice and fresh, but it's not too close to where they're too stressed or too far to where you, you or them or everyone would forget. So you want to schedule that pre-wedding meeting and that is where you're going to be putting together this timeline. So in regards to the questionnaire, that is something that you can either send out in advance or ask them during the phone call. The questionnaire is gonna have lots of questions all about the transportation, the venues, the prep spots, the contacts, all the things that you need to get before you step into that wedding day. You need to get all that information so that you're not stepping in blind and you know exactly what's going on. When it comes to timing, logistics definitely play a part. So you want to factor that in if say, for example, there's a 30 minute or even 45 minute travel time between the getting ready location and the ceremony or the ceremony and the reception. However, if the getting ready location is the same as the ceremony spot or very close, I would say that you need about three hours pre-ceremony when the couple is not doing a first look. If the couple is doing a first look, then I would say you need four hours because you're gonna be doing all of their portraits in advance of the ceremony. Again, keep in mind transportation. So if you have three hours prep and 30 minutes travel, you wanna be sure to factor that in. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to think about is the fact that if they happen to be taking photos pre-wedding at a location where the guests are going to be arriving, you want to make sure to wrap up photos prior to that guest arrival. So that's another thing that you need to factor in as far as timing goes. However, if it's a location where there are different shooting locations or areas that they can go that are outside of the actual ceremony location, you can take photos until pretty close to ceremony. I would say about the 30 minute pre-ceremony mark. So that gives you lots of time to take those formal portraits and to get ready for the ceremony. When you arrive, the first thing that you're gonna be doing is details. I like to carve out about 30 to 45 minutes to photograph details, depending on what sort of details that they have. I do have a separate video all about photographing flat lays and improving your details, so be sure to check that out. But that in and of itself does take a little bit of time to you know, photograph and style and all the things. During the prep, that's where we're gonna be doing getting ready photos, pajama photos, any photos that the client would want during that time. There's requests for reveals, sometimes with say father of the bride or bridesmaids, mother of the groom. We have seen so many variations of the reveals. And again, if you're doing a first look, you need to factor that in too. Sometimes the couples wanna read their vows or they wanna have a little bit of time to pray together or speak with one another. You wanna get all of this information during that call so that as you're drafting this timeline, you have an idea of about how long things might take. If you're ever not sure about how long something would take, err on the side of giving yourself more time versus less time. If you communicate to your client the value of that time and you say, hey, you know, we're gonna be photographing, you're reading your vows after your first look. That's a beautiful moment. You don't wanna rush through that. So let's give ourselves about 15 minutes to do so. So if you have makeup running or you need a quick little touch up before your photos, you have time to do that. The last thing that you wanna do is find yourself rushing through the wedding day, rushing the couple because you feel behind. So having this meeting, it really creates a calm environment for you to have those conversations with them and let them know how much time you need for these moments to unfold and for you to document them on the day. 
When it comes to hair and makeup, I like to ask that the client have hair and makeup complete prior to our arrival. This becomes a little bit challenging when it's a day wedding, um, especially if it's like a 1 p.m. wedding or a 2 p.m. wedding, but I can tell you it's 100% worth it to push for this request. If you're arriving and hair and makeup is not complete, what that's going to look like is it's going to feel very rushed for the client. No one's going to want to take photos because their hair and makeup isn't finished. And so by making this very simple request that hair and makeup be complete prior to your arrival, you're setting yourself up for all of the people who are present to want to be in pictures and to be excited for photos because they don't feel like they're the only person that didn't finish hair and makeup or that they're feeling rushed by hair and makeup at that time. You know, usually the bride and the mother of the bride are some of the last people to actually do hair and makeup. And so I will tell them on this phone meeting that, hey, look, if things are running behind and you know I'm getting there at one o'clock, then you make sure to jump in that chair no later than 11.30 or 12. And so having those conversations in advance is really helpful and it sets you up for success and it sets the client up to enjoy their day. If your originally agreed upon coverage time doesn't cover the amount of time that you need, then you just wanna communicate that to the client during the call. You let them know, hey look, okay, now that we've ironed out the timeline, we're gonna need about you know, one extra hour or two extra hours and here is the cost for that. The reason why there is an additional cost for extra hours is because, you know, that's your time plus the time for your potential second shooter if you have someone photographing with you. Every image that you take during that time needs to be culled as well as edited and included in all products. So that additional fee will cover those services and that time as well as those products that are taken in that extra bit of coverage time. I feel like I could create another video all about first looks, but I will say this, if it's a nighttime wedding, and especially if it's a winter nighttime wedding, I would definitely talk to your couple about the pros and cons of doing a first look. A first look is when the couple decides to see each other prior to the wedding happening, the wedding ceremony. The reason why this is so advantageous for them and for photography is because it gives them the opportunity to get some really beautiful moments alone where they get to see each other prior to the wedding, you know, really be themselves and experience the excitement, the emotions that they wanna have without everyone looking at them when that's happening during the ceremony. It relieves them of the nerves that they might have pre-ceremony and it gives them um, time to do these photos before the wedding in natural light in a calm environment. I find that as a photographer, I'm able to really do my best work when the couple does a first look because we get those really solid portraits. Everyone, you know, they're just hanging out at this point. And so we can do those formal portraits in advance of the ceremony, which means that after the wedding, everyone gets to enjoy the reception, including and especially the couple as well as their friends and family. So I really do push for first look when there is a nighttime wedding, especially in the winter. It just makes for a better experience for the couple. And it really does make a big difference in terms of the photography. However, you wanna keep in mind that this is their wedding day. And ultimately our job is just to make the best images of the day as they want to experience it. And so if the couple decides that, you know, a first look is not for them, they wanna pursue tradition, that is totally fine. And what I do in that situation is I just prepare them for what the day is gonna look like. Maybe that means that we have 30 minutes or 45 minutes after the wedding to take pictures. And then also I might even show them a few photos taken with artificial light or in a church setting, wherever they may be for the portrait so that they know what to expect. You know, I don't want them to see a certain style, a certain aesthetic on my portfolio of outdoor images in natural light and expect that for their portraits. But when that happens, that a couple doesn't do a first look and they do wait to see each other at the ceremony, I have had some couples book a post-wedding session, which is always really fun. So that's a cool idea that you can share with them too. But, you know, either way, the wedding's going to be amazing and our job is just to document that and make it as beautiful as we can. When you're creating the timeline, I want you to use first names. 
Don't just say bride and mother of bride, groom and mother of groom. Actually say John and Susie, and in parentheses say groom and mother of groom, or Carrie and David, bride and mother of bride. That way, as you're getting to know everyone on the wedding day and become familiar, you can start to learn people's names and as you're posing them, you can use their names in the images. It's really helpful. So when creating that timeline, you want to propose every option that you think that they might want. Again, at catgeducation.com, we do sell our sample timeline with our sample shot list inside so that you can use that as a guide to propose to your couple. If they don't want some of the photos, that's okay, but at least you've given them the option and they know that it is there. What we don't want is after the wedding for them to come say, you know, oh, I wish I would have gotten this, or I wish I would have gotten that. And so I've taken all the things that I've learned over the past almost 15 years and I've put it into that document. These are the photo lists that we actually use today. One thing that you also want to ask about is going to be the reception requests. So we all know that we have the pre-wedding photos and usually the post-wedding ceremony photos right at the location where they got married. But at the reception, they're going to be seeing especially some bigger groups of people that maybe they didn't see earlier in the day. Work friends, high school friends, things like that, sorority friends. So you want to ask during that call if there are any reception requests and definitely do your best at the reception to organize those photos for them so that you can make sure that you're capturing the ones that they want at the reception. Make sure that you have all addresses and contact information leading up to the wedding day and for the addresses, get the zip codes. True story, thankfully we arrive early on wedding days, but years ago, apparently there were two places that were very close to one another, same street name, different zip addresses. And so put in the exact address, the street and the zip code, wherever you're going so that you don't get lost and you show up on time. And of course, having a few extra contact names is really helpful because the bride may be busy, the groom may be busy, the mother of the bride even may be busy. So you wanna kind of have a few different names of people that you can reach out to in case you have any questions or like in this case that I'm explaining that you showed up to the wrong location. If there is a coordinator or a planner, a videographer, get their contact information. I would do your best to reach out to those people in advance of the day to create some rapport and know that you're all collaborating for the couple. If there is a planner, before you even have this call, you might wanna make sure that there wasn't a timeline already in place, but oftentimes if there's a coordinator, they will be okay with me creating the timeline, sending it to them, and then us working through the details. And so you wanna get those vendor partners names, not just because of of the collaboration and rapport, but also after the wedding, you're gonna be able to tag them in your images and share those images with them. And so it's really great to get that vendor information while it's nice and fresh in the couple's mind. And at the end of the phone call, I always open up the floor. I ask if there are any remaining questions, if there's anything that they want me to know about or any specific requests that they have, that is the best time to get this information. The day of the wedding is not the best time to get this information. If there's a random idea or something that came up, that's totally fine. But oftentimes couples have been waiting for this day for a very long time. So I wanna give them the floor, open it up, let them know that I'm there to listen and ask if there's any questions remaining. I hope this was helpful as you work towards preparing your very first timeline on the wedding day. I know it can be nerve wracking, but I'm here to tell you that every bit of planning and preparation, even watching this is helping you. This is amazing that you're taking the time to learn and do your best effort to show up well for that couple. So thank you for that. Thank you for listening. If you found this information helpful, be sure to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Um, I appreciate you tuning in and best of luck shooting. Bye.